This entire stack has taken us nearly three decades. However, the performance is incredible, and I'll show you. After three decades, we realize now that we're at the tipping point. A new computing model is extremely hard to come by. And the reason for that is this. In order for there to be a new computing model, you need developers. But a developer would only come if they're end developers have to create applications that end users would buy. And without end users, there would be no customers, no computer companies to build computers. Without, no, without computer companies like yourself building computers, there would be no install base. Without install base, there would be no developers. Without developers, there'll be no applications. This loop, this loop has been suffered by so many computing companies in the 40 years that I've been in this industry. This is really one of the first major times in history a new computing model has been developed and created. We now have 4 million developers, 3,000 plus applications, 40 million CUDA downloads in history, 25 million just last year. 40 million downloaded in history, 25 million just last year. 15,000 startup companies in the world built on NVIDIA today, building on NVIDIA today, and 40,000 large companies, enterprises around the world are using accelerated computing. We have now reached the tipping point of a new computing era. This new computing model is now enjoyed and embraced by just about every computer company and every cloud company in the world. There's a reason for that. It turns out that every single computing approach its benefit in the final analysis is lower cost. The PC revolution that started and that Taiwan enjoyed in 1984, starting in 1984, the year I graduated, that decade in the 80s was the PC revolution. PC brought computing to a price point nobody's ever seen before. And then, of course, mobile devices was convenient, and it also saved enormous amounts of money aggregated and combined the camera, the music player, your PC, a phone, so many different devices were all integrated into one. And as a result, not only are you able to enjoy your life better, it also saves a lot of money and great convenience. Every single generation provided something new and saved money. Well, this is how accelerated computing works. This is Accelerated computing used for large language models, for large language models, basically the core of generative AI. This, is a ten, this example is a $10 million server, and we costed everything. We costed the processor, we costed all the chips, we costed all the network, we costed literally everything. And so $10 million gets you nearly 1,000 CPU servers, and to train, to process this large language model takes 11 gigawatt hours, 11 gigawatt hours, okay? And this is what happens when you accelerate this workload with accelerated computing. And so with $10 million, for a $10 million server, you buy 48 GPU servers. It's the reason why people say that GPU servers are so expensive. Remember, people say GPU servers are so expensive. However, the GPU server is no longer the computer. The computer is the data center. Your goal is to build the most cost-effective data center, not build the most cost-effective server. Back in the old days when the computer was the server, that would be a reasonable thing to do. But today, the computer is the data center. And so what you want to do is you want to create the most effective data center with the best TCO. So for $10 million, you buy 48 GPU servers, it only consumes 3.2 gigawatt hours and 44 times the performance. Let me just show it to you one more time. This is before and this is after, and this is... <laughs> <clears throat> we want dense computers, not big ones. We want dense computers, fast computers, not big ones. And so, um, that's ISO budget. Let me show you something else. Okay, so this is $10 million again, 960 CPU servers. Now this time, 
This time, we're going to be ISO power. We're going to keep this number the same. We're going to keep this number the same. Okay? So this number is the same. The same amount of power. This means your data center is power limited. In fact, most data centers today are power limited. And so with being power limited, using accelerated computing, you can get 150 times more performance with three times more cost. But why is that such a great deal? The reason for that is because it's very expensive and time consuming to find another data center. Almost everybody is power limited today. Almost everybody is scrambling to break new ground to get more data centers. And so if you are power limited or if your customers are power limited, then what they can do is invest more into that data center, which already which has 11 gigawatts, and you can get a lot more throughput. Continue to drive your growth. Here's another example. This is my favorite. If your goal, if your goal is to get the work done, if your goal is to get the work done, you don't care how. Your goal is to get the work done, you don't care how. And this is the work you want to get done. ISO work. Okay? This is ISO work. All right, look at this. <laughs> Taiwan's people love that, right? Nice to see you, Carol. Nice to see you, Spencer. Okay, so let's do that one more time. It's so, it's so delightful. Look at this. Oh, 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 no, no. Okay, look at this. Look at this. Before, after. The more you buy, the more you save. That's right. The more you buy, the more you save. The more you buy, the more you save. That's NVIDIA. You don't have to understand the strategy. You don't have to understand the technology. The more you buy, the more you save. That's the only thing you have to understand. Data center, data center. Now, why is it? You have been, you've heard me talk about this for so many years. In fact, every single time you saw me, I've been talking to you about accelerated computing. I've been talking about accelerated computing, well, for a long time, well over two decades. And now, why is it that finally it's the tipping point? Because the data center equation is very complicated. This equation is very complicated. This is the cost of building a data center. The data center TCO is a function of, and this is the part where everybody mess up. It's a function of the chips, of course, no question. It's a function of the systems, of course, no question. But it's also, because there's so many different use cases, it's a function of the diversity of systems that can be created. It is the reason why Taiwan is at the bedrock, at the foundation of the computer industry. Without Taiwan, why would there be so many different configurations of computers, big, small, powerful, cheap, enterprise, hyperscale? Supercomputing, so many different types of configurations. 1U, 2U, 4U, right? And all completely compatible. The ability for the hardware ecosystem of Taiwan to have created so many different versions that are software compatible, incredible. The throughput of the computer, of course, is very important. It depends on the chip, but it also depends, as you know, the algorithm because Without the algorithm libraries, accelerated computing does nothing. It just sits there. And so you need the algorithm software libraries. It's a data center scale problem, so networking matters. If networking matters, distributed computing is all about software. Again, system software matters. And before, before long, in order for you to present your system to your customers, you have to ultimately have a lot of applications that run on top of it. The software ecosystem matters. Well, the utilization of a data center is one of the most important criteria of its TCO. Just like a hotel. If the hotel is wonderful, but it's mostly empty, the cost is incredible. And so you need the utilization to be high. In order for the utilization to be high, you have to have many different, utiliz many different applications. So the richness of the applications matter. Again, the algorithm and libraries, and now the software ecosystem. 
you purchase a computer, but these computers are incredibly hard to deploy. From the moment that you buy the computer to the time that you put that computer to work to start making money, that difference can be weeks, if you're very good at it, incredibly good at it. We can stand up a supercomputer in a matter of a couple of weeks because we build so many all around the world, hundreds around the world. But if you're not very good at it, it could take a year. That difference, depriving yourself the year of making money and the year of depreciation, incredible cost. Life cycle optimization. Because the data center is software defined, there are so many engineers that will continue to refine and continue to optimize the software stack. Because NVIDIA's software stack is architecturally compatible across all of our generations, across all of our GPUs, every time we optimize something, it benefits everybody. Every time we optimize something, it benefits everybody. So life cycle optimization, and of course, finally, the energy uh, that you use, power. But this equation is incredibly complicated. Well, because we have now addressed so many different domains of science, so many industries, and in data processing, in deep learning, classical machine learning, so many different ways for us to deploy software from the cloud to enterprise to supercomputing to the edge, so many different configurations of GPUs from our HGX versions to our Omniverse versions to our cloud GPU and graphics versions, so many different versions. Now, the utilization is incredibly high. The utilization of NVIDIA GPU is so high, almost every single cloud is overextended. Almost every single data center is overextended. There are so many different applications using it. So we have now reached the tipping point of accelerated computing. We have now reached the tipping point of generative AI. And I want to thank all of you for your support and all of your um, assistance and partnership in making this dream happen. Thank you. <clears throat>